Hello and welcome to tonight's webinar. To fix or not to fix? That is the question. Should you choose a fixed or variable home loan? Your home loan is likely to be the biggest financial commitment of your lifetime, and no one wants to pay more, any more than they have to. Given current market conditions, one of the most topical areas of home loan financing right now is fixed best variable loans, and even a mixture of both. This short McCarthy Group webinar will give you some information on the choices available for structuring the right home loan for your needs. If, any, if at any time you would like to ask a question for the presenters tonight, please submit them in the chat box located at the bottom left hand corner of your screen. I would now like to introduce you to our presenters tonight. Stephen McCarthy, CEO of McCarthy Group and is a leading authority on successful property investing. Stephen started McCarthy Group in 1999 from a small office in Harris Park, New South Wales, and over the past 15 years, McCarthy Group has been the catalyst for changing the lives of thousands of clients by starting them on the road to financial peace of, of mind through property investment. And we have Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson is the head of McCarthy Money. Michael is a licensed credit advisor and has been working in the home loan and finance field for over 13 years and has helped many clients save hundreds of thousands of dollars off their mortgage payments, as well as assisting many people to build an investment property portfolio. Thank you, Stephen. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Trino, and good evening and welcome to everybody all around Australia. We're sitting here in our office at a beautiful, balmy, early um, summer afternoon. Uh, welcome, Michael. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. All right, Michael, uh, first up, um, how did the seminar come about? Well, um, you asked me a question about client feedback and what do you think that customers want to know about? And by and large, the number one question I get asked is, what should I fix or keep my loan variable? The vast majority of loans out there are on a variable rate, but there's a huge amount of talk about it. So yeah, there, there is. Oh yeah. And uh, the, so we're getting a lot of questions on what is the best thing to do. So that's how it's come about. We've decided to uh, put as much information as we can. Uh, I'm going to share some insights with you as to what we see is going on in the marketplace, and uh, and hopefully uh, from that you're going to be able to be in a better position to judge um, what the best course of action is for you. But just before we get into that. We've got a little um, disclaimer here. We've got to keep the lawyers and the uh, regulators happy. This uh, it's a general information um, um, session. Uh, it obviously is not personalised to your circumstances. Uh, now, who is McCarthy Group? For those of you who don't know, um, for the past 15 years, McCarthy Group has been helping people with exactly these sorts of questions and helping them structure up their finances so they can be better prepared for their future financial security. And we do that through strategy planning, helping with your help. We seem to be having a little trouble here with our connection here, guys, so just please uh, hang in there. So we help with investment property, the tax and accounting, property managers, management is what we call a total one-stop shop solution. So you can get everything here under the one roof. Now, um, this is not the first webinar we've done. It's the, uh, the third one to date now. The previous ones have been on property and tax, and this one, of course, uh, is all about finance. Now, just a couple of words on that. It's, um, finance is obviously a, a very important part in any um, property investor's portfolio, as is tax, and we're endeavouring to, to go through these uh, subjects and see how they all link and all come together. In four weeks' time, we, our next webinar is going to be It's going to be on uh, the property market cycles because again, there's a lot happening out there, not just with interest rates and what they're doing, what those cycles are doing, but the property cycles. Is it is it is it is now the right time to buy, or is it is it really the time to hold off? And so the seminar in four weeks' time, and I hope you can join us for that. We're going to be answering some of those key questions. Now, um, Michael, when it comes to interest rates, whether or not we should fix or not. Um, it's just not a simple matter of if you decide to fix it, pick up the phone and ring your bank and say, fix that rate, right? It's, it's really not, I wish it was, um, and it's not a case that you can necessarily fix a loan at the rate that you're paying today. A lot of people do think that, that 
you know, I'm, I'm on a variable rate now, I'm paying 5%, for example, yep. I now want to take a three-year fixed rate at 5%. Mm -hmm. Well, that might be on offer, but it's more than likely not going to be on offer. So, but there's a, more than that, it's not just about the price, it's really about trying to match your scenario. Sorry, we're just coming in and out a little bit there, but I was saying that it's not just about the price, it's about getting your strategy right. It's about asking a lot of questions about what's going to happen now and in the, the immediate future, somewhere between one year, three years, five years, and how that change of product is going to impact yeah. your life. And I'll go through some of that tonight. Okay, so it's not just about the rate, it's actually what you can do at the moment with that rate and how you can best set yourself up. And I know you've got a lot of good information coming up on that very, very shortly. So what are we doing tonight? What's our agenda there, Mike? Well, what we're going to have a uh, what we're going to have a look at first is I, mean, I just want to we need to set the stage a little bit. So what's happening out there in the market? We hear a lot of news. Um, much of it is conflicting. So trying to make a little bit of sense of that. I want to go through and you know, I think where most people are going to get the value here is going through some examples, seeing some of the real life customers that have done real life loan inquiries. This is really the basis of why we put this all together. Um, and we're going to find, you know, just work through why you would fix, why you wouldn't, is the timing right, uh, is it something that you should maybe think about in the, you know, down the line a little bit. Um, and, and of course you can have a bet, uh, a bet each way, can't you? Oh, of course you can, of course you can, yeah. So different things will work for different people. Ultimately I'm here just to give some general information, um, but hopefully some people that are listening in can just hear a little bit that maybe suits their position and make an inquiry after that and we'll give them some real advice moving forward. Okay, now Mike, um, of course at the end of the day, I think what everybody's trying to achieve here is uh, some form of financial independence, isn't it? And oh. this, is, this is just a way, of, one way of structuring up yourself so you can get in that position. So we've got a bonus tonight, you want to tell us about that? Yes, well we've got, um, we're just trying to give, uh, we're trying to give a lot of good information and we want to give, uh, we've got some new computers going around the office here. Um, for those who don't know, we we're actually moving um, offices just across the road um, and that's happening very shortly. So we've got a whole lot of new uh, computers and phones and everything else and we want to give that to some of our customers that are listening in tonight. So, but to do that, we want to get your feedback. What life dream would you pursue if you were mortgage free. Hey, wouldn't that be great? Be mortgage free. That's the name of the game around That's here, isn't it? Ultimately my goal for yeah. everyone that we work with. That's from the burden of interest and tax, right? So we're going to do that offer at the end um, and there'll be some a prompt to to how to go about doing it and uh, we're going to judge that and make a, an announcement when we've uh, given away that beautiful iPad. Okay, that will be a day or two after this event, uh, right? Correct. Okay. Well, as I was saying, Stephen, the when we I get a lot of different, and I read a, uh, a lot of updates and I go to a lot of seminars and I think uh, I could go to two seminars or read two newspapers in the same day and get completely different <laughs> information, right? So why don't we start off, maybe you can give us an idea of what's going on in the economy, what's these market conditions, uh, yep. what some okay. of the driving forces behind these All low right. interest rates. I'm going to have to take up that big temptation to avoid telling the joke about economists. <laughs> I tell about the accountants and yep. we'll avoid economists as well. So look, I'm not an economist and I don't profess to be to. What I am is I am a businessman and I'm an investor and I'm just going to just call things as I see it here. Um, and the bigger picture here is that with rates, nobody actually knows what's going to happen, whether they go up or down or sideways. But what we do know, what we can predict, is that what would happen if they stay at this rate for a protracted period of time? What would happen if they actually went lower? And what would happen if they actually went higher? Yep. We can predict those outcomes. Um, but so, look, you know, first up, let's just have a look at um, why why um, why our rates currently at a 50-year low, and the, the government's got a motivation behind that, and that is that the the, the mining industry is going through a um, like a cycle, like every other commodity, and it's moving into the slowdown part of the cycle. The government wants to avoid the country going into a recession, so it's trying to stimulate spending. Now, a simple analogy here. A simple analogy here is that if you gave your, if you gave your kids more pocket money to spend, what do you think they'd do with it? 
lollies, right? Lollies. They spend it, right? They're not going to save it, right? No. <laughs> they're going to spend it. So, so the government, in a very um, simplistic point of view, by lowering interest rates, it puts more money back into mortgage, uh, mortgage holders' accounts. Now, if you actually look at the economy, it's actually you can break it up into a number of different sections. Yeah. One third of the economy, one third of the Australian population are, mortgage, uh, are paying off a mortgage. One third are renting, and one third have got their mortgages paid off. Mm -hmm. And it's normally that one third that have their mortgages paid off by the pensioners, yes. that which tends to make sense, right? Mm -hmm. Now, falling interest rates actually affects their bottom line. It doesn't stimulate their spending. That's got to hurt them a little bit. It hurts them, absolutely, because you know, they're, living off, and that's right. That's right, yeah. they're living off a fixed income. So, bit of a problem for them. But for the other two groups, for, for mortgage holders, it puts more money back into their pocket each week. And so the idea is they'll go and spend that money. And the retailers love that idea. The Dick Smith, the, the Harvey Norman, the, the uh, David Jones, uh, they want to stay, that's how, they, that's how they, the government's keep trying to kick off their economy. And of course, um, the construction industry. And the construction industry via the, uh, the building of new homes. Now, just also talk about those renters for a moment. How renters benefit. When interest rates are low, the pressure is off the landlords to increase the rent. Of course, yeah. So rents tend to either stabilise or even fall. And we've seen that right across the country. We've seen it right here in Sydney. Yep. Headlines over the Sydney Morning Hill the last two weekends talked about um, rentals are actually starting to fall. And this is actually a, a normal part of the marketplace. So, um, um, and of course, it's just not only um, uh, homeowners that end up more money in their pockets because of the cheaper rates, but businesses, the uh, commercial rates for lending yep. um, falls down. Definitely. And also, um, you know, as you would know, for personal loans, it also, those rates also um, come down a bit. Bottom line, it puts more money in everybody's pocket and away they go. Now the trouble that the, um, Glenn Stevens uh, had some time ago is that he dropped the interest rates and nothing happened. Mm -hmm. We didn't see an increase in retail spending. Uh, and he dropped it again, and still nothing happened. And this this actually progressed for some time. And he actually came out and he's he scratching his head. I said, I can't understand what's the matter with these Australians. They all seem to be saving money; they're not spending it. <laughs> so hence, he, they they reduced it down to their, their current rates at, at the moment. So what people were doing instead of spending their money, they were putting it in the bank and they were paying off their mortgages, which mm. isn't a bad thing. Mm. So now we're we're at a um, we're at a point where the Reserve Bank is very, very comfortable where the rates are at. People are spending. It is creating, however, a bit of a problem in the Sydney, uh, Melbourne, and to extend the Brisbane property markets. Is that by reducing the cost of the commodity called money, it's actually making housing more cheaper. More people want to get in. Less more, absolutely. Less so, supply available. Uh, but what we're seeing here is a, is a difference from other markets, where is, um, the first home buyer is not participating in this latest round. It's the upgraders and the investors of the two the two groups that are driving the marketplace. And some foreign investment from what you read about. Uh, yeah, foreign investment, absolutely. It is. It, um, uh, but that, I think it's a different set of circumstances why the foreign investors are coming in here, not because of the low interest rates, but yep. because of things happening in their own countries. Yeah, right. Yeah, and, but that's also adding a bit of fuel to the fire. And, and so the Reserve Bank is, uh, um, Paul Keating once said, interest rates is a very blunt instrument. Um, so with the, um, with the rates where they're sitting at, at the moment, um, what they've got to be careful of is that if they stimulate too much spending, in other words, if the people are buying too much, you know, they're putting too much stuff on credit, it will start to, um, the danger is that inflation will pick up. Mm -hmm. And they do not want inflation exceeding approximately 3% as the preferred rate, no more than 3%. But we just had figures out in the last 48 hours of showing that latest inflation is in a very, very comfortable rate, just under 2.5%, two, two I think I saw. Yeah, right. uh, and and they're, very, they're, they're very happy with that. Now, with that alone, I would I would um, guess that rates should stay. There's no pressure on the reserve to put rates up any further for the interim. Mm. Yeah, but again, money being a commodity, it's at a 50-year low rate, and I really want to emphasise that. So, if you're buying any commodity, the best time to buy it is when it's low. When it's available, low. And it's low. Why yeah. not? Uh, but to use that money in a, in a really in an effective way, like, so what can you do with the money? You can mm. obviously buy investment property. Of course. And, um, and you know, the other thing too with, with rates with the current level, what we're seeing is that you can get your money for sub 5%, right? Mm -hmm. You're getting rental yields also at around the same level, around about this 5% yield mark. Yep. So if you get five, pay 5% 5 for your money, 
five percent paying five percent for your money, or under five percent, approximately five percent rental yield, you've got a neutrally geared position almost from the outset. Yeah. And now, now that's a win that is a small window. It doesn't last, and why it doesn't last, why that window doesn't last, is that more and more money pouring into the property market pushes the prices of the rentals up, which means the corresponding yield on the property gets smaller and smaller. But right at the moment, like I call the markets at a sweet spot, right? so um, it's a great opportunity to get money at a very, very, um, yeah, at a fifty-year low. Yeah, right. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, well, that clears up a lot of the. Uh, I mean, you know, that's that's a good. It's a good point of view. It's I uh, really like the. It's simplistic terms of why people are seeing what they're seeing, and it, I can really reiterate that that's why we're getting a lot of that inquiry in, uh, particularly you know, the, the project that people were doing on their home renovation that they were putting off, they're now doing. Yeah, they the are, new yeah. car that they were thinking of buying for the family that's, right. that's coming to realisation, yeah. uh, being able to hold not only new properties that they buy but existing properties for next to nothing, if not positively, like you're saying. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. and, but I've got to say it again. It's a sweet spot. It's a window of opportunity. It doesn't last for long because the more and more people begin to realise, hey, I can get a property for next to nothing. You know, this is really affordable. More and more people come into it. It's like a little bit of an avalanche. Mm. And and as they keep pushing up the prices, then the window drops off until the next cycle, which could take another seven years for it to come around. Yeah. Right. Mm. Okay, now you've got to talk to us a little bit about um, uh, the cash rate. Yeah, the um, we've got a. I know you were talking about the last the 50 years there. This this uh, graphic takes a, over a 20 year period or a little bit more. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty reflective. Looking at the red line there, that you can really see how low it's been it's under the inflation rate. It's, it is, and that's why it's. Um, you, you talk about the, the real interest rate, you hear about economists talk about what's the real rate. The real rate less is whatever the headline rate is um, taking away the rate of inflation, and that's why they talk about such a great time to be buying money. You can really see that over that 20 year period there's definite peaks and troughs. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Um, and you can also see you know, right there in that 2014, 2000, uh, you know, end of the graph, right at the end, is that it's very, very stable at the moment. We haven't had an interest rate change for the last 13 months. So mm -hmm. the question, of course, is has that leveled out continually? And I think you've answered that a little bit, but there's no immediate no. question uh, to either rise, raise the, the rate or reduce it. The thing that I read is definitely they talk about when the next rise will be, more than when they talk about what the next drop will be. Absolutely. Yeah. If you're a betting man. If you were a betting man, you would probably say the next movement's going to be up yeah. and not down. Yeah. But And for all the reasons that you said, I think they, they feel that the Australian dollar is is, is coming back um, from you know above above a dollar in the US. Um, that was always a problem for them. They're quite comfortable about um, unemployment. Yeah. You know, or they they were probably expecting some more loss of jobs as the mining industry come off, but mm -hmm. things like construction have picked up. So yeah, I think they are yeah, yeah. quite happy about it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. So um, let's get down to some of these examples because I, I think it's the, the stories inside these examples. Now, just a little word of warning to you guys listening in here. Uh, um, Mike's pretty analytical and he's got a very comprehensive <laughs> set of numbers coming through. It looks a little bit intimidating when you see it on the page, but the main point here is um, what is what's the story behind the example? So Mike, let's just tell us about this one. Yeah. You were telling me about it before. It's one of it's a multi property investor. He's got quite a you know reasonable looking portfolio there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would say I put this one on first and we're gonna spend the most amount of time on it. Um, I'm, I don't pay don't have to worry too much about the numbers there, but this is the type of thing that I do. Um, this is an, a, a, a customer who is an existing customer who um, a very long period of time ago purchased some property through the group um, and they, they came back when the, for some advice. You know, They were approaching their retirement and by that I mean it's not like they're retiring tomorrow but uh, definitely, particularly in the husband's case, was really reducing his income mm -hmm. and they were really enjoying you know, very happy with what they put together. This has gone over a 15 year time frame. Yep. So made money, 
subsequently invested in more property, future gains, did the same thing. We're always very conscious of how much money the property was costing them, um, and as a result of it, they had a budget. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. yeah, very. They were financially minded. I will. Um, I will say that. Yeah. But you know, we were talking about you know that's about three million dollars worth of property there, loans of one point five million. You know, that's just over fifty percent. Yeah. Um, that's that's a really good equity position. Uh, part of that money isn't even actually borrowed. They're, they've got a line of credit worth seventy five thousand, which we don't actually. They don't know anything on, but we always count it in case it is used. That's how the banks look at these things. Mm -hmm. And my job was to sort of take what they were doing, this change of lower income for the next few years, the thought of retirement maybe five years away, yeah. um, and make them feel a little bit better about interest rates, particularly. Yeah. Yeah. What they the their rate here is not that bad, is it? I was going to say, the reason that, that they actually took this CBA loan, this was actually against the advice guys, but um, they, they felt strongly about it at the time and they went away and financed all of their loans with CBA. Mm. They did it because 5.15 that's a, was a pretty good rate at the time. This was about four years prior, I think, if memory serves. They, the more money that you take into the bank, the, generally the better the discount they're going to give yeah. you. So that's a, a premium customer in yeah. their eyes. Yeah. So, but you know, the danger is here is that you've yeah. got one lender holding all of the yeah, security. It, it is, and I'm going to show you on the next one that the thought of that isn't necessarily true either. Maybe we just um, flip to the next screen. Yeah. So all you need to take from that first slide, guys, out there is this is a, a, a very typical kind of McCarthy Group client who over a long period of time has a belief in property and put some of these uh, their actions to use and, and have done quite well over that period of time and they're quite good with their money. What we wanted to show them is that they had a big concern about if interest rates rise, they've got $1.5 million worth of debt, which for most people is still a lot of money. Yep. So they're really prone to interest rate fluctuations. If those rates go up by a couple of percent, that is probably going to cost them a whole lot more money than they are at the moment, mm. and they were really costing them nothing at the moment. Um, the, the, the rents far exceeded the amount of um, loan repayments and costs that were associated. Okay. Yeah. So they were in a positive gear. Yeah, basically. yeah, they were. Um, yeah. And what they wanted to know is that in the next couple of years, particularly with the reduced income, that they weren't going to have to expend any more than they were now, or as little as possible. Mm. Uh, they did have a belief that interest rates were going to rise. When I asked them the question, what's the average rate that they've paid, because they've had loans for a long period of time, they gave me an answer like 7%. Mm. And that's typically what most customers tell me. Mm. So yeah. to enjoy 5.15, they thought well, they were doing pretty good. Yeah. So the next slide here we show them, we call this a hedge, everyone. Hedge means part fixed, part variable. Now, 57%, it works out, of their loans, they took on a fixed rate. Mm -hmm. Now, the fixed rate they got, and this was with ING, 4.79%. That's a great rate. So that's 0.36 difference between what they were paying, which they thought was a good rate, with another bank, fixed for three years, and they they're not giving all that business to the one bank. Yeah. So lower loan amounts and all the rest. Yeah. Now they also, you know, with they owned a couple of properties by the husband particularly had a major share in the two properties at the bottom of the screen, the North Queensland and Melbourne. And where with the reduced income, there was a lot less tax advantages and things available to him. Mm -hmm. So with they were thinking that if they were to sell something and they weren't a hundred percent on any of this that if they would sell a property, it was going to be Melbourne. And if they were to sell a second one, possibly, it would be the, the North Queensland property. Yeah. So that lent itself to a variable loan straight away. Yeah. High cost associated with breaking a fixed loan. Mm -hmm. um, so they took the, the option of having part fixed, part variable, mainly for those reasons, and they took got a 4.69% interest rate on the variable. So again, even though they only had $560,000 worth of lending, in this case it was with Suncorp, um, they were 4.46% you know, better than what they were doing with CBA. So they're in, winning all around there, aren't they? They didn't come in for savings. They, really, they, didn't, they just really wanted to maintain. But what they ended up walking away with was 4.26%. 
uh, sorry, four point two, four hundred and twenty-six dollars per month. Yeah. Better off. Yeah. Well, you know what they could do with that, don't you? Well, that's uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We have to pay for another property. Oh, well, and then some. Yeah. And then some, really. So there's quite a, quite a good success story here, isn't it? They, they didn't do this all at once. No. They started off with the equity in their home. No. That yeah. allowed them to purchase their first one. The combined values then allowed them to purchase their third and their fourth and their fifth and so forth. Yeah. So, and, and, and at the same time, they actually had they had more than enough money to help reduce their home loan to nothing. I mean, yeah. they did have a home loan when they started this. It wasn't like they were... Um, they're not super affluent people or anything like that. They really built that. It yeah. uh, wasn't handed to them. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think the, the real point um, of this one but as well was that they, they weren't thinking that there were savings, but they, they actually thought, if I, had to, I think if I took it back and asked them, they probably thought they would have to pay something to get it fixed and to make sure that this doesn't cost them too much. Mm -hmm. And so they end up uh, $400 or a little bit better than that, better off a month. Um, sort of blew their mind. The real bonus though, after all this was said and done, because they had a good equity position, they actually didn't use their home for collateral anymore. Oh. So, you know. So they released their home from, yeah. the, from uh, so the home's not been, been uh, it was un unencumbered, not oh. been used for... Title, the title deeds was handed back to... Yeah. So although... It's ideal, isn't it? It is. I mean, you've got to understand that the bank is always going to try to take as much security as they can. And probably at the time that they last did this, maybe they did need to secure a little bit of debt against their home just to, to make sure the loan-to-value ratios and keep the bank happy and minimise risk, all those sort of things. Maybe it, was, maybe it was required four years ago, but it definitely wasn't required now. Um, so they've got the deeds to their home in their pocket. Yeah. <laughs> They've saved some, myself some money and they've got, a, they've got themselves a quite a good exit strategy. Yeah? They do. Yeah, great. Okay, good example. Then we move to the next one. Hope you enjoyed that example. It's, um, it just it makes you know, so much sense. Again, I think we started by saying it's just not about the rate. It's what you can do with the rate at this point, how you can then rearrange um, your financial world to take advantage of all these things. Right? Yeah, 100% okay. right. Okay, let's have a look at number two. So, so this is, um, you know, not, I guess, the typical customer that I see because this has actually been referred from one of our existing investors. So it's son and daughter. And, you know, I'm not to say that we would never help someone with their first home. It's, by all means, that's exactly the type of thing that I do. However, um, the first case was a little bit more what we deal with day to day, maybe a little bit more complex, definitely higher loan amounts definitely more prone to interest rate fluctuations because of the amount of debt they hold. Mm. But this is a great example for anyone who's on the line who is just, just a homeowner. Um, it, it's actually someone who was buying their first home. They were paying rent of over almost $2,300 a month uh, for their you know, accommodation. Yep. They were engaged, looking about to get married, had a couple of personal debts. Now, the personal debts like, you know, it doesn't look too great there. You got, you're paying rent and you're, you're paying a car loan and a personal loan, but they actually did have some savings. Um, they were saving to buy their first home mm -hmm. and they, they, they could have had, they had the money to pay these loans out, but they knew that they needed some money together to pay for that deposit on the home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, what ended up happening was that mum and dad preferred McCarthy Group we sat down and tried to work out some strategies with them. Now, mum and dad did get involved. They ended up actually helping them to pay out those debts because mm -hmm. they saved so much money that they only needed that savings to buy to get a 20% plus the cost of the new property. Right. But what I want you to tell, just uh, what we have to know about these guys is they're a young couple. They, as I say, were engaged, about to get married. Um, they've done some overseas travel. I think that's how they actually met. But more than anything, they were planning for a family. Mm. So the house purchase was coinciding with the fact that they wanted to settle down and, and, and have a child, essentially. Mm. Now that threw up a whole bunch of, not issues, but challenges. Because you know, you, you won't, we don't want to have to work out what your repayments and things are on your income today if that income is going to be different in the future. Yeah, down to one income for So if we just flip over to the next slide, well, this is what we ended up uh, with. They ended up buying in the Hills District for 595000 It was a, a home purchase. They ended up, again, with a hedge, very heavily weighted to a three-year fix. So you can see there, 
400,000 plus the 76,000, that's the total loan amount, 476,000 borrowed against the property, which is 80% of the value of that property. The other 20% came from their savings. Mm -hmm. So one of the differences between the first slide and the second is that those loan repayments came to 2,500 for the month, minimum repayments. They were actually paying 3,715 when you combine the rent and the loan repayments on the personal debt. Yeah. So that made us pretty happy because we know that we got capacity anyway. We then had to pressure test that against one person's income. And we obviously chose... Well, they're better off position. Better off just doing it. Anyway. No brainer. Yeah. Um, but they did have, um, they, did, they were concerned that they were going to lose an income for about a two year period. Mm. Potentially. You know, that's what they thought. Mm. Didn't know, they weren't pregnant, they didn't know for sure if that would happen, but that was what their plan was. Um, so we, had to, we obviously pressure tested that against what he, uh, Mr's income was. Um, he was more than comfortable with that. And mum and dad came to the party to actually pay out those personal debts, call it an early inheritance. Um, and they had the capacity to do so, so there's their new position. Why a fixed loan and why so heavily weighted? Because of that period of time that they thought, we're not going to be paying big time extra repayments, um, we're not going to have necessarily a huge amount of surplus in the budget, yeah. we just want certainty. Certainty yeah. is important, that means a fixed rate. Yeah, well that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Straightforward, but I think a classic example of why someone might want to uh, you know, typically the people like to fix their interest rates when the rates are rising. Mm. Goes up, goes up, goes up, oh, I can't afford this anymore, I want to mm. fix the rate. Mm. It's too late, generally speaking. The banks have already priced the, the increases up. That's true. So, you know, they're doing a little bit of forward planning makes a, a huge amount of difference. And again, it's not really for these guys saving money, it's about being certain about being able to afford it in the future. Okay, all right, now that's, a, that's another good example. We've got a third one here. We do. Oh, we've covered up all those points, so sorry, a bit slow on the slide. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> now this okay. one here is what a, a customer who's done something called a knockdown and rebuild. So for those who don't know what that is, a knockdown and rebuild is where you have an existing home and dwelling and you've actually removed the place that, the building as such, left with a land component and you build a new one. So very, very clever start, starting position. The truth is um, this customer has a, a couple of investment properties, I believe. Uh, no, one definitely, but it's standalone. I think it was actually their previous home. So they had a very small amount of debt on it, had a good value. They decided for whatever reason, this was prior to meeting with McCarthy Group, to hold that property as an investment. Um, but we just left it out of the example to make it, yeah, keep it nice and simple. Yeah. They got a very small, home loan of 125000 that's always been a variable loan, and they had what was previously a fixed loan. So they had a hedge, like just like the examples we showed before, mm -hmm. but the, the fixed term has expired and it's reverted back to the variable rate product, same as the home loan. They're actually paying a little bit more on those home loans than they need to be as a way to minimise their mortgage. Uh, and they've got a, they're, he's a bit of a share trader, I wouldn't say he's a serious share trader, but he's definitely done, played the market uh, over the years and likes to have a little bit of money available should he see the right opportunity. So that's what that loan there's about. Okay. Okay. We'll just go to the next slide. So we had a $1.1 million property. That's been reduced to 900000 That's because he's removed the building. Truth was the bank said he thought this property was worth $1.1. The bank said it was actually worth about a million. 900 for the land, 100 for the building. Right. So it was a very old um, fibro house actually. Yeah. Um, they've now you know, going to go through a process where they have to knock that thing down, demolish it, get the site ready for the builder, so the bank only wants to use the land value at that point. Sure. They then need to go and pick the builder. You have definitely done some interviewing and things like that. 597,000, so that's quite a sizable um, build. Mm -hmm. Uh, lots involved in, in that type of build. Uh, that did include everything, so all the fixtures and fittings and they had a, quite a lot of um, influence on the design because it is their home that they're, sure. they're doing. Yeah. But, um, dream home? Dream home, yeah, that's yeah. really what the ultimate goal was. Yeah. So the $400,000 loan there you see is replacing 
the, the 125 and 236 slides. Mm -hmm. Or with, that's just one for one. But you'll notice that that's a lot larger for 400,000. We're borrowing that extra $39,000 there because demolition costs more than anything and what we call incidentals. Yep. They had some savings as well, but they really wanted to borrow it. They, you know, this was a major project. And everyone's warned them about cost overruns. They don't, you know, they don't know that they could necessarily um, get the, the building pad of the, the foundations and that down. Uh, it's going to depend on what sort of testing and that the, the builder does. Yep. They hadn't had council approval, so they were told that uh, there could be some increased costs when it came to things like fire ratings of the windows okay. and things like that. A lot of unknowns. Just a lot of unknowns, yeah, basically. Point, yeah. So they were trying to maximise their land. Yeah, they don't want to quick call to do that. Correct. Mm. And then we've got the um, construction loan itself, which is the money that the bank approves but holds on to and only pays the builder when the job is done, yep. you know, as in those certain stages. Four downs. So we've got a situation there where a customer's got a, a share trading account that because he plays the market a little bit. That definitely lends itself towards a variable rate. We've got a home loan that's got savings and we've borrowed extra money for incidentals. Again, that's variable because you know he doesn't want to be paying more interest than he needs to be. Needs an offset account that lends itself to variable rate, um, and he wants to be able to, if should he have the extra money, pay it off his home loan or redraw it and all that type of thing. Flexibility, flexibility, right? Mm. And then the last one is the construction loan. Now, in that case, there's no option with that bank, and that's pretty much industry wide that you couldn't have a fixed rate. The bank wants it to be variable. They don't really consider it a real loan or a full loan until it's fully drawn. Sure, yeah. So there's an so example of... Has to be. Has to be. Yep. Big time concern for him though was that his home loan has gone from quite a small amount of, you know, that just uh, just around $300,000, a little bit over, to he's got one point, almost $1.1 $1 .1 million. A mm, bit of a jump. So that was the dream home, though, that they wanted. They did have the other asset in the property. They didn't own, owe a lot of money. It was an investment. But, yeah, that was obviously a concern. What we did do in this case, and he hasn't actually finished the build. This is a very new customer. Um, in fact, I don't even think he started the build. We have earmarked the date for the future once it's all said and done to reanalyze what's going to happen. He doesn't really have much choice but to keep it variable right now. No, he doesn't. He probably would opt for fixed if he could have it for at least a portion of it, but circumstances are what they are okay. and we need to have a look in the future. The important thing is we get that, that builder on the job and get his new home finished as quickly as possible. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, it's probably a six months build. Probably and then some. I mean, it is a major build in this case, so um, I, yeah, it's, we don't have much control over that. It's not like one of our builders, but yeah. Um, sure. yeah. Okay, good. Kind of a good example of what we can do here. Right. Um, okay, then again, we've, we've got a summary there. Major flexibility. Um, yeah. An offset required for home loan to build. Yeah, investment loan. Okay. Well, good. what have we got next month? So just this is really, really just a bit of a recap of what we've been talking about and fi fixed versus variable. You know that is the question. What we said, um, fixed means inflexible, guys. So we'll go through the list there. Uh, repayment certainty, yes, and it's the big one. If you want to make sure that your repayment can be at least that minimum cost for a set period of time, then you know fixed all the way. Additional repayments though. Most banks will allow you to do some, but they restrict it. If you do too much, so sometimes it's about $5,000 a year, uh, then you're in some sort of trouble, they're going to penalise you for it. Redraw, I can almost certainly say there's only a couple of lenders that I know that can redraw at a fixed rate. So if you want to make extra repayments and access that money, choose, choose variable. 100% offsets, I can only think of one bank of all, I deal with about 30 lenders, that has 100% offset, a true 100% offset account, that's with a fixed rate. Again, you want one of those, and if you're trying to pay off your mortgage fast, that's definitely the product you want. Take a variable loan. Interest only, yes. Some banks say that you've got to have it the same as your fixed term. So if you've got a three-year fixed loan, you can only be fixed. You can only have interest only repayments for three. Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of banks will let you have on a variable ten years worth of interest only. Yep. So investors like those. Um, construction, we just spoke about that one. If you're paying interest in advance then you want to take a fixed rate so the bank knows where you're at. 
Uh, that's a big, that's a, probably a subject for a tax seminar. Early repayment fees and break costs. Of course, they're the big ones that if you're not certain that um, you're going to see out the, the mature, the, the, see that loan mature, uh, maybe fix it for three years. If you, if you think you're going to sell your property, then please um, avoid the fixed loan because it will cost you when you're doing it. Mm. And if you're looking to get a little bit more servicing out of your bank, there are a few, if you want to talk to me about that, maybe you're pushing the, the borrowing capacity limits a little bit. If uh, certain banks will allow you to use the fixed rate itself when you're trying to prove affordability because they know that it's set for a long period of time. If you're taking a variable loan, a, ben, uh, a bank will always benchmark you. So if your interest rate is 5%, you're going to qualify at 7% because mm -hmm. they're allowing for these interest mm -hmm. rates to go up. Yeah, so not all banks do that. That's a little bit specialised, but definitely um, does help a little bit. And it does help you know what your repayments are going to be. So therefore, you can make a bit more of a, be a bit more aggressive about it. Okay, that's good. All right, uh, Mike, we've got about five minutes left. We're going to open up the line shortly for some questions. Um, but just before we, uh, we do that, and folks, um, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask us, uh, we've got a couple of minutes left here. Um, just uh, just uh, get your keyboard and throw them in there if we haven't answered them already. Um, so I'd just like to summarise some of the things that we've spoken about here today and how we can help. Well, I think from tonight's, um, uh, what you've heard so far is that one of the biggest challenges for us in doing an event like this is, uh, is not trying to overstuff the turkey. There's so much more information that we could really talk to you about. It's, uh, our challenge is what to leave out. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, we've we've even cut some of the some of the you know we've tried to reduce it today already. Yeah, and get material. you have to. It's um, I know we keep everyone online. All we'll be here all night. Yeah, we we would be, and uh, I think maybe half our audience would be falling asleep. <laughs> yeah, busy day and all. So um, look, you know, we're here to uh, we have a dedicated finance team. You can shoot in your circumstances, talk to us on the phone, email us, come in and visit us. Uh, tell us what tell us what you're thinking. What you're trying to achieve? Would it be buying another investment property? Um, be knock down and build down your home, as we've seen here tonight. Help a family member into their um, property. Yeah. We're not the bank. We understand how the bank works. We understand how they think. Um, and we, most of all, is that before you, you know, before we put a proposal to the bank, we've got all our ducks in a row as far as what we need to tell them. What what uh, to, to show you in your most favourable light, so you can ultimately get what it is that you're really looking for. And as, as Mike mentioned earlier, this isn't so much about the rate, but it's about structure. It's about planning. It's about uh, a little bit of forecasting. Um, and uh, and but you know, many people uh, really just don't have the time to sit down and even ask themselves those very questions. And what they tend to find is that like time moves on, interest rates start moving back up there again, and they look at each other and say. I think we've missed the boat. If I'd only got, if I'd only done this sooner. If I only done it sooner, we hear that all the time. So um, um, try and cut some time out of your uh, out of your diary, and so you can sit down and have a chat to us. Um, it could save you an absolute fortune, um, and I'm very confident that you'll you know you'll get a lot of value out of having a, a, a chat to us. So um, so all you've got to do is the information is at the the end of the email here. Just drop us an email, and we'll we'll get in contact to you uh, from there. Um, okay, now I think we've got, um, just want to remind you again, uh, 25 you know, words or less, what would happen to you if you became mortgage free? Where would you go? What would you do? How would you spend your time? How would you spend the money? Would you cut your, hour, your work hours down? Would you give up that overtime? Would you give up that second job? Um, what is it? What would you, you know, we, we read a lot, we're very interested in to hear uh, your story. So please just take a moment and we've got a great iPad to give away. Someone's going to win it, um, so why not you? Right. Now we'll draw that one, so all those answers win, we'll draw that and we'll notify you by email over the next few days. And that just about brings us up to our questions. I don't see any, a lot of questions coming through here. We did um, have a couple of questions on the before, I don't know if there's there. Okay, what have we got here? Most of the questions that we've had are, are all are pretty the same actually. Is that to fix or not to fix, that is the question. <laughs> what I, no, I mean, my answer to that, Stephen, is definitely, you. It's definitely the right time to have the conversation. Yeah, a great time to have the conversation, and also what we started with saying was it's a great time to be buying money. Yeah, it's a commodity. It's like anything else, and it's cheap at the moment. Yeah. Um, now I I'm hoping our um, our host here tonight. Uh, there is a survey uh, that we would appreciate you completing. It just a little bit gives Mike and I a little bit of feedback as to what you liked or didn't like about the seminar, how we can improve on it. We do intend to run them on a regular basis. As I say, 
the next one around four weeks time is going to be about the cycles in the property market, how to read them, how to read what's going when you see um, the seven o'clock news or the, uh, you pick up your local newspaper or you hear people talking, all those are indicators to what the market is doing. Yeah. And you know, but depending where you are in Australia, if you're living in Sydney, you know, you're, you're getting knocked over in the rush, people trying to buy homes, not so much if you're in the other parts of the country. So it's a, it's a, you know, we've got seven different states and territories and different things happening here at all, all parts of the time. So our seminar in four weeks' time uh, is all about that, how to read the property market. We've got a lot of really good information coming up on that. So, um, so the survey's just come up here. If you can take a moment to uh, just uh, give us a couple of quick answers here, we would very much appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll okay, just mic the hand over back to our, um, our host tonight. Are uh, you there, Juno? I am. You are. Thank you very much. So thank you Stephen and Michael and thank you everyone for joining. Hope you enjoyed this evening's insightful presentation. Please take a moment to submit your answers for the exit survey there and once you do, you're more than welcome to log off. Okay, have a great evening. Good night everybody. Good night.